Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis. This is episode 171, and I am glad you're here. So I have been uh, attempting to share the podcast on Instagram because there is this weird kind of workaround where you can post links on Instagram through Spotify. <laughs> So it's a it's a fairly complex uh, journey to get there. So if you have a podcast and you need some uh, assistance, let me know. I can I can probably walk you through it. <laughs> but in that journey uh, of posting the podcast on Instagram, I you know I've been like typing up the things in the comment box or whatever it's called. Um, and you know, I like hashtag this hashtag that and I hashtagged blogcast because I was like, Oh, that's I made that up. And you know, there were all it came up as like a thing. There were many other people who have blogcasts. I was shocked. Uh, I thought I made it up. I did not. Um, so if you hear of somebody else doing a blogcast, let me know because I'm curious. Um, yeah. I guess it's not just me. We're all just kind of out here in the world just throwing our blogcasts and uh, hoping somebody will catch it with a hashtag. <laughs> Somehow I don't imagine there's a lot of people who search, oh, where can I get a blogcast? It would be nice, but they, I, I doubt they do that. Um, anyway, today's blog is about being weird. Um, which I am. And uh, it's also about other people who aren't weird, which I think is weird. So um, in that spirit, I give to you, be the weirdo you want to see in the world. Look, I've always been a little bit weird. I wore my tutu with pants and an engineer's cap to school when I was a kid. I might still wear this given a chance. I don't care much for social conventions or fashion trends or behavioral controls. I'm sort of constitutionally an artist, and a certain amount of difference discomfort is just a normal part of my life experience. But recently, I've been feeling like I'm much weirder than I used to be. Or rather, I'm as weird as I've always been, but I seem to seem weirder to the outside world. I get a lot more quizzical looks than I used to. I get more heads turning in my direction if I make a sound. I feel like I'm weird everywhere I go. Even in weird New York, which has not historically been worried about weirdos in its midst. I'm not concerned about it for myself. I'm a comfortable with myself woman in my 40s. I don't really worry about what most people think of me. But I am concerned about the weirdos behind me. I am concerned that if even my lowest level weirdness is drawing attention, the less comfortable weirdos, the young ones who are still finding themselves, will feel less and less comfortable becoming their full weird selves. It feels like the world is bending toward a conformity that makes me very nervous. The current bent toward the collective sometimes means more policing of behavior, I think. People seem more inclined to try and fit in somewhere than to just rock who they are, wherever they are. This may be a generational preference. Much of my generation would rather walk into the sun being 100% true to ourselves than conform to the crowd. There are absolutely advantages to the group choice, but I worry about the loss of those sun walkers. It feels like it makes the world less interesting, less vibrant less alive. It's not just my feelings that are signaling that I am weird. I got a notice at the end of last year, a, a sum up of my listening on Spotify. They described me as 100% different. This tells me that the bulk of Spotify listeners are playing highly conventional tracks, that there are not nearly enough people venturing down the less traveled hallways there. Because sure, I like to explore music from around the world and will happily venture into unknown musical territory, but there are surely musicians with more adventurous tastes than me. At least I hope there are, because I am really not that weird musically. I don't want to be a lonely, weird music listener. I'll give you another example. 
I went to an author event. It was a big crowd. And while the subject matter was intense, the author and interviewer were making jokes and being engaging humans. Being the human I am, I laughed at the jokes, gasped at the astounding facts, and clucked at the reported bad behavior of some. But I was literally the only one making any sound. People turned to look at me. I was a sound-making weirdo, laughing and responding instead of sitting in silence of the rest of the room. I know I seemed like a weirdo in that room. But to me, the room was weird. Who just sits in silence while someone makes a joke? They're just going to let them flail up there on the stage? A laugh after a joke is polite, especially if it's genuine. My clown training prevents me from laughing at theater folk who aren't funny, but I will still laugh as a social lubricant in a social and lecture setting. Clown rules do not apply to the general public. Anyway, I walked away from that event feeling as though the world had changed in a way that has made me less welcome in it. It has become a world wherein I'm weird everywhere I go now. Not just because I wear asymmetrical dresses, but because I bring all my human self with me wherever I go. Those kinds of things seem to happen more and more, and I don't know what to do about it. Luckily, I am already comfortable with being different, with being weird. But I want to make space for all the other weirdos. I want to find a way to support those who want to laugh but feel silenced by the group. I want to live in a world with more fully human humans and a whole lot more weirdos. So I told my friend about this event, this author event, where I felt like such a weirdo because everybody thought I was a weirdo for having a human response to to the people on stage and uh she was like oh yeah that's like my classes she's in grad school and uh a lot of the students are younger and uh she said it's just super strange they're they don't they don't respond they don't react they're they're not vocal her theory was that they were afraid to be perceived and i don't know what way <laughs> they were they were afraid to be perceived period i suppose anyway i think it's very uh disturbing um yeah so be weird y'all be weird come join me in the weird ball pit it's fun in here <laughs> we can laugh we'll laugh a lot more i i promise um anyway i don't actually have a ball pit i'm sorry if i did you would all be invited to it but i don't have one um, so today's song is, uh, a song I didn't know before. I, I Googled search songs about weirdness or something. I don't remember exactly what my search terms were, but I stumbled across, um, this song by Katie Tunstall, who I adore and love. I just d n had never heard the song somehow. Maybe I missed this album or I don't know, but, uh, she's amazing. And this song kind of is exactly... It's, it was so perfect. Um, so I learned it on ukulele. Uh, Tunstall's kind of a wizard on the guitar, and I am not a wizard on the ukulele. So um, I skipped the little bridge where she does some whistling. Um, so if you're looking for, if you know this song and you're looking forward to it, I'm, I'm just going to warn you right now, there's, there's no whistling, and I didn't do the bridge because... Uh, I'm not that good on the ukulele yet. I'm getting there. I played a chord in this song that I haven't played anywhere else yet. I am making progress. Um, actually, there's several chords I hadn't played yet, but one that I was like actively avoiding because it's kind of hard. <laughs> um, I actually play it in this Still a Weirdo song. Um, yeah, so enjoy Katie Tunstall's Still a Weirdo um, as played by me on a ukulele. Um, I will link to her song in the show notes, although I have noticed in various apps that, that those links don't necessarily, um, translate. Like I put them in and I think some companies just don't love a link. Um, they'll put in the links that are put in directly, but they won't do like, uh, I don't know what it's called when you like embed it into the word. 
So you'll have to search for it yourself if you want to listen to it and you're listening on a platform that doesn't do that is what I'm saying. Um, and check it out because she's great. Um, yeah, so if you like the podcast and you're listening, I thank you. That's the most important thing. And uh, if you'd like to support it, tell someone about it. That's great. Um, five stars in various apps, I'm told, also makes a difference. Reviews also make a difference. Um and if you would like to support the podcast with your money, that's also awesome. And a way to do that is uh, via Patreon, patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. I would be delighted to have you there. Um, and or uh, you can also shoot me a donation through Kofi or PayPal. Kofi actually connects to PayPal, so it sort of ends up being the same thing. If you go to Kofi, um, uh, PayPal, you can just hit me directly. Both those links are, are in the show notes. And uh, I just got one of those today, and it's just such a great, sweet little boost. I tell you what, you go like, oh, oh, hmm. I mean, you know, $3, but like $3, $3, man. It's nice. It's the $3 I didn't have before. It's very nice. Um, so without further ado, I give to you Katie Tunstall's Still a Weirdo. Now I know I took for granted that things would always go the way I wanted. Oh, I was going to be a tree top, a sea, a boat, a rock of ages. I don't know. After all these